Okay, welcome back to SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. This is our OpenStack Enterprise event, uh, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, in conjunction with SolidFire, live broadcast here. Enterprise is hot, OpenStack is hot, Open Compute is hot. Everything open is hot, but more importantly, the cloud. Dave, I'm with Dave Vellante, my co-host. Our next guest is Rodney Peck, OpenStack storage architect with PayPal. Um, PayPal's in the news lately. Obviously, that's like the, the, the hot product within eBay um, and a lot in the news, but we want to talk more about the tech going on. eBay, huge hyperscale environment. You guys are not foreign to the notion of a lot of stuff going on in terms of data, compute, networking challenges. Um, so I got to ask you the first question. A lot of commentary in the crowd chat about the storage architecture. Um, block, storage, object store. How do you handle all this with OpenStack? What do people need to worry about, about OpenStack storage? How do you use OpenStack storage? Um, well, uh, one of the big things with OpenStack is it's uh, related more to Amazon EC2 and object storage than to more traditional uh, storage like POS6 NFS. So um, a lot of the stuff we're running into is educating developers about how to use uh, Amazon's features and uh, OpenStack's features uh, more effectively. It hasn't been that difficult. It, once the um, architects find out the features, they're, they're quick on board. The, the agility and the, the uh, speed of uh, OpenStack being able to create new volumes and attach them makes any sort of downsides of uh, change really not that big an issue. Uh, in the past, to use storage, you'd have to work with a storage vendor and have volumes allocated and targets created, and, and it's a much more physical thing, probably creating tickets to your your uh, site. But uh, with OpenStack, it's just click-click or uh, API calls. So those are the sort of changes. It's so maybe you could explain that a little dynamic. bit. So you're using a little bit of AWS, a little, a little bit of OpenStack, a little bit of other stuff. Sure. Can you just sort of describe that environment for us a little bit? Just paint a picture. Uh, as far as Amazon and... Yeah, uh, you're mentioning Amazon. So you're using some Amazon for what, test and dev or... Well, um, you know. our M&A people, the, the companies we purchase, a lot of them have piloted their things in Amazon. So they have a, something that's working with S3 and working with AWS and Elastic Block Store. So you bring them into an OpenStack environment. Right, so OpenStack you, uh, okay, lets you set up an environment where you can create almost the exact same thing. Maybe, maybe even use the OpenStack EC2 uh, API, but move towards the OpenStack API for okay. additional features. And so, uh, presumably they're using a lot of S3, uh, and maybe even some EBS. Mm -hmm. So what's the, so the analog of Elastic Block oh, Storage sure. in, in OpenStack yeah. is Cinder. Yep. What's the sort of status? What's your experience with that? How's it going? Cinder, um, Cinder's going very well. Um, Cinder and SolidFire is really tight. Solid so you use SolidFire underneath we have so, We have many different vendors. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, we use SolidFire for some of our flash storage. Um, we, we're looking at Ceph for low-cost block storage. Um, we have NetApps, we have EMC, we have Hitachi. We're a very large company. With Got a lot one of it all, one yeah, of everything. A lot of legacy <laughs> hardware. Like a lot of cloud service providers, so, actually. <laughs> and really, that might be something to talk about, is, is you don't have to throw away all your hardware just because you're moving to this OpenStack. A lot of these companies have developed Cinder drivers. Some of them aren't as feature-rich as others. Like Some provide fast cloning to create volume. Some you make a new volume, you have to copy all the data by hand. So it, some are more effective. But if you've already purchased a, a piece of hardware and have a lease on it for several years, you don't have to throw it away. You can use it with Cinder. Um, and for some people, that's a better solution than buying you know, is that, is that So in general, you're going to, I would presume, increasingly demand high quality you know, drivers and connections from in fact, legacy storage into whether it's, what, Swift or, yep. or Cinder or Ceph. Or Manila, yeah. Manila, yeah. Um, the NFS project. Yeah. So yeah, anybody who's working with eBay or PayPal now, we, we make that a clear point that these are the APIs we're working with. We, we're, anybody who works with Cinder or Neutron or any of these other APIs, we're willing to talk to them and, and you know, could be a big opportunity for a small company. So John was just talking about, we were, we were just at the OCP uh, summit yesterday and, and with theCUBE and today for a little bit. Um, how are you addressing uh, different hardware configurations for different workloads. Uh, how closely are you looking at that? Uh, you know, are you, are you thinking about OCP? I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, OCP, the, the biggest problem we would have when using that for storage is who do you call when there's a problem? You know, what, what, 
there's no vendor to go that's going to dispatch somebody to help you fix this. Kind of on your own. To save your million dollar account. So um, we, we, PayPal, we're, we're very high reliability. We're very conservative in redundancy and, and things like that. We'll spend extra money to make sure that we don't end up in a situation where everybody's up for two nights to, with an outage. There's not a lot of outages of PayPal you read about in the paper. So Flash, obviously, big disruption in the storage business. Mm. You know, for years, the spinning disk has been the bottleneck. We all kind of know that. A flash comes along, you got this persistent medium as a, well, either a memory extension or stuff into existing boxes. So many different use cases across the spectrum. I wonder if you could talk about Flash and sort of eBay's philosophy on Flash. What do you, what do you, you know, your personal opinions? What you're sure. seeing as a sure. storage expert? That storage used to be boring. It used to be how many, how many gigabytes do you need, and that's that. We used and to call it storage. Yeah. <laughs> so now, with all the new things coming out, iSCSI, uh, 10 gig networking is cheap, um, Flash. Suddenly, suddenly, storage is really complex, and, and the best solution isn't really obvious. And um, what's happening is that the price performance curves are changing. It's, I think right now we're at this. It's not. It's a little early to be buying all flash unless you can afford it. But if you go out and buy really large drives next year, they're boat anchors. So. I think in two years it'll be really, really obvious what to do. Right now, it really depends on your use case, on, on your application, and you have to analyze that if you're going to buy a lot of something. On the other hand, things are relatively cheap, so you can kind of get a, a common denominator. Uh, a lot of vendors are working on uh, spinning disk prices at flash speeds. That doesn't fit our case because our data centers are full, so we don't have any room. We need the flash speed we don't have room to be putting in spinning disks, so we want as much flash in the rack as we can. You talked before, it's a different Rod. Different sort of. Uh, yeah, sorry. Okay, so you talked before about all the different legacy platforms that you have, and the nice thing about uh, OpenStack is you can actually leverage those assets. You don't have to throw them out. Um, now, you, of course, you see all this. You hear all this discussion about software defined, and you have a number of, of companies that are talking about separating the control plane from the data plane, and essentially that. That data plane, I guess, that back-end storage gets commoditized and all the value goes to sort of the control piece. What do you want your control plane to be? Is that OpenStack? Is that? Oh, absolutely. Right? absolutely. 100%, right? That's, so Yeah, we don't, in fact, the vendors a lot of times will have a big GUI or some sort of, uh, well, the worst is when they have a Windows appliance that you have to run to manage your storage system and it has all these point and click things. We don't want any of that. We want to just control it from, from OpenStack APIs. Is, otherwise you can't script it. You want to consolidate all those different points of control so you can automate, single pane, presumably. Yeah, single pane of glass reporting, single pane of control. Sing, but, but, but I feel like the single pane of glass, I feel is like it's a single version of the truth. Do, we, mm -hmm. do, we, do you see the light at the end of the tunnel from a storage perspective on the single pane of glass? Yes, I mean it's it's one of those project bullet points that's like next quarter we're going to do that, and so we try. But every yes, but you know what I'm saying. You've been hearing that from vendor pitches for decades, haven't you? I mean, everybody talks about single right. pane of glass. The so higher you go up in the management level, the the more important that is. It's right. Like <laughs> okay, but so OpenStack is 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 you think can deliver on that promise? Sure. Uh, you know what's kind of how it's like a snowball. Um, it's sort of. As you have an API for networking, you have an API for storage and an API for compute. If you have something else, uh, say backup, why wouldn't you have a similar, you know, so it's sort of just, if I can do this and this and this, it just provides a framework and a model. Rodney, if you had to look at uh, thinking about your life before OpenStack and your life after OpenStack, and you had to, if, let's say you had to build a little business case, you know, after the fact, you know, hindsight being 2020, what would that business case look like? You know, roughly, I mean, even in, you know, what gut feel terms, percentage terms, or however you want to communicate it. How much money did you save? How much, you know, sure. faster were you able to deploy things? I wonder if you could just share any metrics you can share or any subjective comments around that. I, I, sure. The, uh, before I was with uh, um, uh, PayPal, I was at Yahoo, and I was, uh, 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 I was the oper operations architect for Yahoo Mail, so it's like an enormous mail system. And we, at Yahoo, we're deploying you know, thousands of machines a quarter, and we would find when we shut down a data center, 10 to 20% of the machines in the data center were idle for the entire time they were in the data center. It's crazy, because you have to go to David Philo and justify them every <laughs> week and say, not we only, need 12, we'll give not, you eight. Not, not only underutilized, 
You're saying idle. Idle, like yeah. the machines were installed by the operations team. Nobody ever logged in, nobody ever installed any packages. We only found out when we shut them down to close the colo. So then, of course, the management's like, we can't continue to do this. We need to find out. So they got stricter in the allocations. You need 12 machines, we'll give you eight, because 20% of what you ask for, you're not going to use. And that's what they did. And somehow that didn't work either. But yeah. OpenStack and virtualization for, gives you this way to say, you need uh, 100 machines, okay, we'll get you that capacity. If you only use 80 of them, that other 20 is available for another project, and, and you don't have to keep track of it. So we literally save millions of dollars a quarter just in unused allocation of, of resources. And, and I think that's the big business thing for the uh, senior level of management. If we could save that 10, 20% loss, we get more value out of the data center, and that's multi-million dollar because the, the power and consumption is huge. Last, last question I have you for any sure. Any big shortcomings in storage that you see within the OpenStack framework that you'd like to see addressed by the community? Yeah, um, there's always new features coming out. Um, so things like uh, backup, Things like uh, inter-vendor, inter-backend uh, migration to, to say move a volume from a, a Ceph to a solid fire or something like that. Um, those sort of things. Yeah. There, there's features, but right now, create a volume, use a volume, do, delete, all that management sort of stuff, is, it's, it's functional yeah. as it is. So we've been really, really happy with it all in all. Excellent. Okay, Rodney, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. Um, I know you guys are really short on time. No, no, <laughs> we, we'd, like to, we'd like to get, but I wanted to get the Dave one that had some specific questions. I had some, but we couldn't wait till after the camera. Uh, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back. We're going to go through rapid fire. We want get, to get the toughest questions we can find. If you see them, go to crowdchat.net slash OE forum. Crowdchat.net slash OE forum. That's our public open timeline across LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. That's a public chat on the hashtag OE Forum. That's a crowd chat. Put your questions there. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.